Hello there. In this video, we are going to discuss the basics of bonds. We are going to start with understanding some of the basic terminology behind bonds and we are going to learn the differences between bonds and stocks or shares. And later we will look at how to price a bond and also understand what yield to maturity is in detail so that we can clearly understand what it means when they say that a bond trades at par or at premium or at discount. Okay. So to begin with, bonds are instruments of fixed income. Okay. A bond can be issued by a company or the government or different sections of the government such as municipalities for example. Okay. The structure of a bond is very similar to that of a loan. So instead of borrowing money from the bank, if a firm needs a huge amount of money, they could ideally issue bonds to potential investors okay, who, pay, who pay the price of the bond to buy it today and in return they collect these interest payments in the, which in the case of bonds are known as coupon payments and they keep collecting these coupon payments until the bond matures after a certain period of time let's say five years or ten years right okay so what's the difference between a bond issued by a firm or stock or shares issued by a firm okay a bond offers periodic coupon payments okay this is fixed it doesn't change okay if the bond says okay the firm can offer 10% every year that's fixed okay if you are invest if if you invest in this particular bond you get a return of 10% every year okay but on the other hand if you invest in stock or shares you don't expect periodic payments as in the case of bonds okay if you invest in shares or stock you could potentially get dividend payments which can be regular or irregular nothing is guaranteed or you could also make money if the stock appreciates in value and you could sell them. But in this case of bonds, they are an instrument of fixed income. These coupon payments are regular, but again, they are not guaranteed, right? Let's say this bond is issued by a corporation, which is presumed to have high risk. If at some point in time, if this company goes bankrupt, then the chances of you recovering the remaining coupon payments or the face value can drastically go down, okay? So let's start with looking at some of the terminology behind bonds, okay? Face value or par value, okay? So each bond has a face value or par value, which is the amount you receive when the bond matures, okay? This is usually a rounded value like $100 or $1,000, okay? So if the bond is, let's say, for five years, at the end of five years, if you are a bondholder, you receive this amount. It can be that $100 or $1,000. Maturity date is the date at which the bond matures. Like I said, if the bond is issued for, let's say, five years or 10 years, the maturity date would be five years from now or 10 years from now. Coupon rate, like we discussed earlier, is the interest rate, right? So if you borrow, if you buy a bond today, you are entitled to a coupon payment. If it's an annual bond, you get it every year, or if it's a semi-annual bond, which is usually the case, you get a coupon payment every six months, okay? Remember, this is very similar to the interest payment being made on the loan, okay? Yield to maturity, as the term itself implies, it's the yield you make until the bond matures, okay? It's the return, it's the expected return if you hold the bond until maturity. We will see how this is different from the coupon rate later when we look at examples of how to price a bond. Okay, when bonds are issued, they are typically issued at par. What I mean by at par is that if the face value of a bond is a hundred dollars, the issue price is also a hundred dollars. Okay, but bonds, because they are traded in the market, their price can fluctuate for a variety of reasons. And if the price exceeds the face value, or if the price is higher than the face value, then the bond is said to be trading at premium. Or if the price is less than that of the face value, let's say $90 for a bond with a face value of $100, then the bond is said to be trading at discount. Okay, we'll look at those in detail when we calculate how to price a bond. Okay, we're going to start with a very simple example here with an example of a zero coupon bond. Okay, what do I mean by zero coupon bond? It's a bond which does not pay coupons. Okay, or the coupons are zero. Okay, 
So what you get when the bond matures is the face value and you do not get any coupon payments in between. So let's assume an example where the face value of a zero coupon bond is $100. Okay. And the yield to maturity is 5%. Okay. So that's the expected return of the bond if you hold it to maturity. Okay. The maturity, so the date of maturity for the particular bond is six years from the issue date. Okay. The price of this bond can be calculated using the present value function PV. The rate is the rate of return, which is 5%. The number of periods is six years. There are no regular payments, so PMT is going to be zero. FV, the future value, is 100, which is the amount you receive at the end of six years. Okay. I've made another video where I discuss these finance functions, PV, FV, rate, number of periods, and so on in a separate video. I'll link that below in the description so you can check that out if you're interested. Okay. So the price of this bond is approximately $74. Okay. Next, we are going to look at a bond with coupon payments. Okay. We're going to continue with a similar example, but in this case, a bond has coupon payments. Okay. Let's assume that the bond has a face value of $100 again. Okay. The yield to maturity is 10% and the coupon payment is again 10% or $10 every year. The maturity date is six years from now. Okay. How do you calculate the price of this bond? We use the PV function again. Okay. So the rate is 10%. The number of periods is six years. Now we have an annual payment of $10 every year, which is the payment. And then the future value is the face value, which we get at the end of the six years. Okay. In this case, the price of the bond is exactly the same as the face value of the bond. This is because the yield to maturity is exactly the same as the coupon rate. Okay. We would later look at examples to see how this changes when the yield to maturity changes. Okay. As we discussed earlier, bonds provide a fixed income, right? So $10 every year is being fixed for a period of six years. Okay. But in the market, interest rates can fluctuate up or down. And because of these fluctuations, the effective yield you get from this particular bond can change over time. Now let's expand this example a little bit. Okay, let's keep the same numbers. Let's assume this is a bond issued by a company called Firm X. Okay, now Firm X issues a bond at par at $100. Okay, offering a coupon payment of $10 every year and the bond matures in six years. Okay, now let's assume that two years have passed by since the issue of this bond. Okay, so let's, we are at this time point in time. Okay. So the time left to maturity for this bond is now only four years. Okay. I'm going to remove that first. So we just have four more years to maturity. In these two years, let's assume that the interest rate in the market has gone up. Okay. What do I mean by that? If there are other firms in the market, which are similar to firm X in, in terms of their risk profile, these firms offer a higher return on their bonds. Okay, so now the bond offered by firm X is no longer attractive if it trades at $100. Okay, remember we mentioned that bonds can trade every day in the market and somebody who's looking to buy a bond with a similar risk profile would now prefer to invest in these other bonds, let's say which offer a return of 12%, but firm X only offers a return of 10% and hence it's not attractive anymore. Okay, so what happens now is that firm X, which has a similar risk profile, should also offer a similar return as compared to these other firms. So if the yield offered by the other bonds are 12%, then firm X also offers an yield of 12%. How does this happen? It happens in the market through a price adjustment. Okay, the bond from firm X no longer trades at $100. It trades at new price, which can be calculated again using the same PV function. The rate now is 12% instead of 
The number of periods, we only have four more years to go. The payment stays the same. The bond still keeps offering the $10 coupon payment and the face value of $100. Now we can see that the bond trades at approximately $94. Okay, Why did the price go down so that an investor who still keeps getting the $10 coupon payments and the $100 face value at the end of the sixth year okay, would effectively get a return of 12%. If you look at the table here on the right, this example corresponds to the last one here where the coupon rate is less than the yield to maturity. So in this case, 10% was less than the 12%, which is the effective return. So the price adjusted itself downward as compared to the face value. Okay. In this case, the bond is said to be trading at a discount. What happens if the interest rate in the market goes down? Okay. Effectively, let's say the other, bo the other bonds which are similar to firm X offer a return of 8% instead of 12%. Okay. Now our bond from firm X becomes much more attractive. Why? Because offering a 10% coupon rate at a price of 100 gives an effective return of 10% and that's very attractive. So now the demand for the bond from firm X increases and this results in an upward adjustment of the price. Okay. As you can see, now the price is around $107. This upward adjustment in the price happened because the bond from firm X was still offering a coupon of 10%, which has been fixed, but the effective return in the market is only 8%. Okay. So firm X ends up offering a return which is similar to these other firms with the same risk profile in the market. Bonds also typically offer coupons on a semi-annual basis rather than on an annual basis. Okay. Now let's quickly see how to make these adjustments in the formula to reflect the semi-annual payments. Okay. So we keep the same PV function. Okay. Now the rate, which is 8% is an annual rate. I'm going to divide that by two to get the semi-annual rate. The number of periods is four years. I'm going to multiply that by two to get eight time periods. The coupon payment is $10 per year. I have to divide that by two to get to reflect $5 every six months. And the face value is at the end of the four years. Okay. If you get semi-annual payments, the price of the bond from firm X is approximately $106. This price, instead of using the PV function, you could also calculate it using the NPV function. I already have another video on how to calculate NPV and IRR and so on. I link that in the description below. And if you're interested, you can check that out. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. Cheers.